It goes without saying that in 2012, zombie-related media was everywhere. You have video games like Left 4 Dead, all of the various renditions of Call of Duty zombies, countless zombie films and books being published, notably the Zombie Survival Guide and World War Z, and of course we can't forget the massive success of The Walking Dead TV series and the franchise of video games that spawned from it. Nerds worldwide would dive into the zombie culture and embrace it thoroughly. And one of the fondest memories I have from this time period is sitting around in the living room with like a bunch of friends sort of discussing out our zombie survival plan like where would we set up camp would we go to some sort of mountaintop or find an island what type of guns would we be using would we go full auto or will we have the carbine set up would grenades be involved and of course you got to determine what type of zombie apocalypse is this are they the rampaging souped up 28 days later zombies or the more slow classical George Romero type I really don't know what would be the most optimal zombie scenario here so I figured I would ask the most qualified person I could think of, Justin Wang. What do you think would be the best cinematic universe of zombies that we could come across? So Avi asked me, out of all the different zombie universes that exist out there, which one would I like to see made into reality? If you've seen my content before, you're probably expecting me to say Resident Evil because I've made so many videos about Resident Evil. Or if you know how much I love horror, you might think Romero zombies or maybe Fulci zombies that are super powerful and brought to life through the powers of the gates of hell. But it's not those. Actually, what I would like to see made into reality is from a very underrated cinematic masterpiece by Michele Soave known as De La Morte De La More, or Cemetery Man in the US. Now in Cemetery Man, the caretaker of the cemetery falls in love with a widow who gets killed by her ex-husband and turned into a zombie. This widow returns in many forms throughout the movie, always played by the very, very hot Anna Felci. So that's the zombie cinematic universe that I would like to see brought to life. The one with the hot, big titty Italian zombies. Back to you, Wavy. You know, I can't say I'm surprised with Wang's answer, but, you know, the big titty goth GF zombies would probably be a good outcome. So it is silly to look back at these conversations I had, you know, about this potential zombie apocalypse. We were almost hoping that it would occur, and I think there were plenty of people out there that thought the same way about this scenario. But I wanted to sort of recount this anecdotal experience and my past with zombie culture because it helps contextualize this story that we're talking about today, and this story is a doozy. Some of you may remember this. Back in 2012, there was something that really made people think that a potential zombie apocalypse was underway, and this was the 2012 Miami bath salt zombie attack. So let's go ahead and get into this story and dive right into it. This story starts on May 26th in Miami, Florida, with a man traveling from North Miami to South Beach for a hip-hop music festival. But everything goes haywire. The morning of May 26th, North Miami resident Rudy Eugene was traveling to South Beach on his way to the Urban Beach Week Hip Hop Music Festival, which is held on Miami South Beach. However, while on the way, his car had broke down. He was caught on security camera lingering around his broke down Chevy Caprice for close to half an hour before he decided to step off on foot. He would abandon his vehicle and begin the three mile trek across the MacArthur Causeway, and this causeway is basically this giant bridge that goes over the Biscayne Bay and connects Miami to South Beach. But it wouldn't be long into Rudy Eugene's trek until things started to become a miss. Eyewitnesses report that not long after leaving his vehicle, Rudy Eugene began stripping off his clothing to a point where he was butt ball naked. At approximately 1.55 p.m., security cameras captured the unthinkable that's about to occur here. As Rudy Eugene made his way up the causeway, security footage captured this moment where he momentarily stops and seems to be talking to a man who's just out of view of the camera. And this guy is a 65-year-old homeless man named Ronald Popo. And it's difficult to make out here, but you see a sight cyclist riding by Rudy Eugene and he seemingly lunges at this guy and misses and then after his miss he turns around and begins attacking Ronald Popo. And this attack was brutal. Not only was this guy using his hands and feet to attack Ronald Popo, he literally gnawed off 80% of this guy's face from bite wounds. The aforementioned cyclist was watching all this go down, Ronald Popo going through what must have been a living hell, getting his face bitten off. Police would arrive shortly. Police officer Jose Ramirez arrived and after doing a double take at the spectacle, warned Eugene 
Eugene to desist from attacking Popo. Rudy Eugene ignored the officer's warnings and instead reportedly growled at the police officer, then resumed attacking his victim. The attack would finally be ended at 2.13 p.m. with Officer Ramirez shooting Eugene once at first and then another four times, totaling up to five shots after 20 minutes had gone by of what must have been a living hell for this Ronald Popo guy. Rudy Eugene was finally killed by his gunshot wounds. I must warn you, the image I'm about to show you is extremely graphic and if you're not willing to see literally a pile of flesh, I would recommend you pausing the video or skip forward 10 seconds because this right here is the face of Ronald Popo immediately after that attack. It's hard to believe that this man is alive. Ronald Popo survived the attack. It's really amazing to me that he was able to survive this. I would imagine the amount of blood loss that he endured was extreme. And there was a fundraiser that was started which gained over $100,000 to pay for his facial reconstruction surgery and this is what it looks like after that. Now at this point in the story you gotta be wondering why the hell did Rudy Eugene snap like this and attack Ronald Popo for seemingly no reason. And we'll start off by looking at a statement from Ronald Popo. Ronald Popo says that Rudy Eugene approached him looking quote souped up on something and claimed that Ronald Popo had stolen his Bible, which obviously was not the case. This guy was delusional, and it was this altercation, you know, verbal back and forth between the two that agitated Rudy Eugene into attacking Popo. Now, I'm not completely satisfied with this explanation, and I'm sure you aren't either, so we're gonna look a little bit deeper into the reasoning behind the attack a bit later in the video, but I wanna keep this narrative going and continue the whole media spread of this case because it was a world worldwide story. In late 2011 and early 2012, synthetic drugs like bath salts were becoming relatively easy to find. It was possible to find these drugs at certain head shops across the United States. There was a massive gray area regarding the legality of these designer drugs. In the United States, the number of calls to poison control centers concerning bath salt poisoning rose from 304 on their list in 2010 to number 6 in 2011. So these synthetic bath salt drugs drugs were becoming a massive problem in the United States at the time of 2011 and 2012. And many of those who were invested in this case began spreading the theory that Rudy Eugene was indeed under the influence of bath salts, as hallucinations, paranoia, and rage are some of the negative hallmark side effects involved with it. But a toxicology screen would reveal that bath salts were nowhere to be found in Rudy Eugene's system. The only drug that was in Rudy Eugene's system was marijuana, and that's really debatable if you even want to call that a drug. It's an interesting note though because this story has become most popularly known as the bath salt zombie or the Miami bath salt attack. When I talk to somebody about this incident, the running story is yeah, Rudy Eugene, he was on bath salts and ate a dude's face off when that necessarily isn't the case at all. So bath salts aside, there was another popular explanation for the gnawing off of Ronald Popo's face. And for those invested in the zombie culture at the time, you best believe they were thinking this was ground zero for zombie apocalypse day. They thought Rudy Eugene was like the patient zero for some sort of new zombie plague. And for those who had been prepping for a zombie apocalypse, the time was now to go forth with their zombie survival plans. Those who had accepted the zombie explanation for the reasoning this occurred, well, they felt the bath salts narrative was a conspiracy put out by the government to cover up the fact that zombies existed. You only need to read a small excerpt from Max Brooks' zombie survival guide to sort of understand the rationale for those who believe this is the case why they would think that way. Knowing what a zombie is will not help you if you are unable to recognize an outbreak before it's too late. This does not entail building a zombie command post in your basement, sticking pins in a map, and huddling around the shortwave radio. All it requires is looking for signs that would slip by the untrained eye. And I want to direct your attention to the third little blurb here that Max Brooks states that people who are vigilant of zombie outbreaks should really be looking for if they want to be prepared. Cases of violent insanity in which the subject attacked friends or family without use of weapons. Find out if the attacker bit or tried to bite his victims. If so, are any of the victims still in the hospital? Try to discover if any of these victims mysteriously died within days of their bite. Zombie enthusiasts were like, yeah, this is a case of a zombie right here. The dude clearly bit off the guy's face. 
Straight up zombie, there's no doubt about it. And to sort of add into the paranoia involved with the potentiality of a zombie existing, there was whisperings of a new virus that existed called LPQ-79, which was beginning to spread across the world. Google searches at the time for LPQ-79 resulted in no scientific evidence or history of such a virus that had been discovered. There was a YouTube video and a website that suddenly emerged that began publishing information about the virus and its connection to the Miami man's zombie-like symptoms. This video claims that a new virus remarkably similar to rabies was on the verge of becoming a plague, and it was spread through bite victims would travel through the blood of the victim and infect the central and peripheral nervous system, causing the victim to want to bite other hosts, you know, to sort of spread this virus. The video goes on to claim that research on this new virus was primarily embarked on by a Dr. Rebecca Carey, and an excerpt is given of her claiming that NATO had been scientifically engineering viruses which could cause violent behavior in humans. I have in front of me a book published by NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, called The Biology of Aggression, which is, um, let's see, it's, it's over uh, 600 pages long. They're actually researching to see what areas of the brain they can affect to make people violent. So if you were one to buy into conspiracy theories, at this time, it was pretty much 100% confirmed that zombies were real, and that was the reason why this man attacked Ronald Popo. Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but this whole LPQ-79 thing was just a massive hoax. This Dr. Rebecca Carey lady is infamous for having her medical license revoked in 2004 after claiming she had magical powers which could cure cancer, autism, and other autoimmune disorders. And the LPQ-79 YouTube video and website was created by a web admin named Alfred Moya. And Alfred had created this YouTube video and website just to see how many people he could fool and I would imagine he wasn't too surprised at the amount of people who bought this thing hook line and sinker so yeah six years later a zombie apocalypse never occurred clearly there was no LPQ 79 it was all a big setup so if Rudy Eugene wasn't high on bath salts and he didn't have some sort of deadly zombie virus why the hell did he attack Ronald Popo in such a savagely brutal way? Well, honestly, I think the best way to explain his violent attack is just to look at Rudy Eugene's criminal history. This is an excerpt from Murderpedia. Eugene was arrested eight times from the age of 16, with the first arrest being for an assault in 1997. Another assault occurred on February 25th, 2004, when Eugene broke a table, smashed items around the house, and pushed his mother out of the kitchen. After Eugene Eugene's mother Ruth told officers that he had said, I'll put a gun to your head and kill you. This crime led to his serving probation for resisting an officer without violence. The remaining charges were mainly related to marijuana, which he had expressed a desire to quit. His last arrest was September 2009. Rudy Eugene was a perpetrator of serial violence, and in my opinion, he probably had some sort of undiagnosed mental disorder that led him to violent tendencies. And on one hot Miami day walking across the causeway, a conversation with a homeless man caused him to be agitated, and well, he snapped, and his attack resulted in his own death and Ronald Popo unfortunately losing. 80% of his face. Well, that's pretty much the story of the 2012 Miami bath salt zombie who wasn't on bath salts and wasn't a zombie. It was just an insane guy who brutally attacked somebody. Do you guys remember when this happened? Were you one of the people who sort of bought into the potentiality of a zombie apocalypse? I know I halfway kind of was hoping that was the case, but now being a grown ass man, you know, I kind of like uh, uh, having an established society which you can, you know, go to the grocery store and buy food without having to, you know, run into a band of killers. But let me know what you guys think about this video and make sure you go check out Wang's channel. I got the link to that in the description box. Also, go to Cool Shirts and check out some of the gear they have for winter time. You won't be disappointed. 10% off code in the description box. And major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys supporting me. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.